My name is Rachel and I'm an audit transformation manager here at Data Snipper. Um, I'm joined by two other of my colleagues, uh, Justin and Cyril. Uh, they'll be helping monitor the chat. So if you do have any questions, make sure to submit those and they will do their best to answer them or flag them for me and we will uh, address it with a larger group. Okay, a couple more moments here, but if you did just join, reminder for uh, those training materials you can access. Um, today's uh, demonstration is going to be based off of version 5.1. Uh, that's the version of Data Snipper I have. So that's what today's uh, session will be based off of. Um, there isn't a is not major differences uh, to from 4.1 if that's the one that you're on. Um, you might just see some different uh, cosmetic changes up at the top, but you still will be able to follow along and perform all the functionalities today. Um, all right, I think we can go ahead and get started here. Um, we do have a quick agenda that we're going to jump into first. Um, again, this is webinar two in a series of two. Um, so it is loosely based off of the first webinar that we had. Um, we do have some polling questions, so this is interactive. We hope that uh, you're able to vote uh, with us today and give us some some feedback and some you know market information about uh, auditors who are performing employee benefit plans. The bulk of the session today will be getting into two use cases that we've developed um, that we're really excited to show some really great functionality, in particular templates. That's kind of the underlying theme of this session today. And then we'll close off with some next steps. If you did attend the first one, we kind of got cut off at the end there. Won't happen this time. We have a lot of eyes on the clock. So um, if we don't get to your question, however, make sure to still submit it in the Q&A and we can get back to your question um, offline uh, after this webinar is completed. Um, so I just did want to draw your attention to the chat here. Um, thank you, Justin, for uh, sending the, these links. Um, we do have a session one recording. So if you weren't able to attend webinar one, which was May 25th, uh, we did provide that Zoom link here for you to access. There's also training materials uh, for, for webinar one in the latest chat. And then webinar two, which is today's, uh, make sure you have those open and ready to go for us. Um, I do see a question in the chat uh, that it's disabled. Um, yep, that's actually due to our client privacy. Um, if you do have any questions to interact with us, do put those in the Q&A function. But let me know if you're not able to see uh, anything in the chat. When you join, I don't think you can see the historical posts, um, but you should be able to see those now. Let us know on that. All right. Well, I think that takes care of the agenda and the opening. I think we can jump right into some polling questions we have for you guys. First, we wanna know, do you attend the first webinar? Um, we're really just trying to gauge a little bit of participation and return, return customers, if you will. Um, but also curious if you want us to send you the webinar one link. If you answer no, or that third option there, uh, we will follow up with an email with the session one recording and the training materials that you can access. Also, if you weren't able to attend the first session, we are going to be repeating this throughout the summer. So our next uh, webinar is going to be in late June, and that's going to be a repeat of the first session that we had. So we've gotten really great responses and really great feedback from our users. Um, in order to, uh, that we've, we've seen a lot of success, so we're gonna repeat this through the summer. And end of August, we are going to have a tips and tricks webinar, kind of what we've learned, uh, you know, some, some feedback that we wanna give it back to you, um, the users of Data Snipper. So looks like we got a pretty even split here. It's good to see some of you back and then to see some of you uh, in the future, it looks like. Awesome. I'm gonna end that poll and we'll jump to the next one here. We really wanna know what brought you back here. 
um, you know, why, why did you come back to webinar one or why did you end up joining uh, this webinar today? Just looking for some feedback here of, you know, what are you really interested to learn? It helps us tailor our webinars um, and our content to, uh, to what you guys are really wanting to, wanting to learn from us. See, we have about 60 answers so far. Justin, is there anything uh, interesting in the chat that people are, people are inputting? Morning, Rachel. Um, skimming through, uh, I see a lot of people commenting on the, the use cases we presented last time and just kind of wanting a little bit more. Um, so that's always positive to hear. Um, thank you everybody for that feedback. A um, couple of people, people mentioning TVs. We, uh, I think, mentioned last time that we were going to be looking at TV reconciliations. Um, so that's coming through quite consistently. Um, yeah, data, data reconciliation seems to be quite a, quite a key theme. So um, I'm hoping that today will be quite useful for everyone. Yeah, hopefully that's right on target. <laughs> awesome. Okay. We'll keep in putting those answers. Um, we will leave this poll open because we do want to hear from you. Um, but now I'm actually going to navigate to the live demo. If you are following along, be sure to open up the first folder in there. It's called investment testing. I'm going to navigate over there quickly. Um, okay. It should be, it's best if it's on a folder in your desktop. Um, I'm going to head, go, go ahead and open that investment testing folder and the Excel file in there named investment testing. Give the group a moment to uh, find this page here. If you are having any issues, reminder to use the Q&A function. That's how you can interact with me, Cyril, and Justin today. Um, the chat function is really just for, our, for us to post in there and throughout the session justin will be repeating posting so if you are joining late uh you could either just put a quick uh need materials in the chat and we can get those over to you all right so the first use case we have here is uh an investment test um in my experience um with evps uh it's not much but i was a big four auditor in my prior role and I've been lucky enough to connect with different EBP auditors that I've met in the, the Denver conference, the AICPA conference or otherwise, um, that have given me some really good feedback on how they, uh, maybe some problems that they're having or ways that we can use automation, i.e. data snipper in their audit. That's really where this, um, this use case derived from. Shout out to Lacey from PYA for uh, having some lengthy conversations with me. Um, if you navigate into the viewer, uh, this is going to show you where, what documents we've already provided to you. These are actually real life, uh, real documents that Lacey had provided. Um, and we really want to drive home how you can use data snipper in reports that, you know, aren't as pretty and clean, um, you know, to, to show you some ways that uh, you can still use the tool. What we're going to do today is uh, just to show you from the files that we have up. We're going to be extracting the investment name, which is up at the top, the end of period balance, which is this dollar value here, and then the uh, number of shares here. So if you look onto our work paper, these are those columns we're gonna be populating from these plan level financial statements. We're then gonna recalculate a price per share using the two inputs that we have extracted from these reports. And then we're going to validate those prices to a third party um, resource that we have. So um, we're gonna be showcasing a couple very simple of our simple tools. We're gonna be going through form extraction, uh, then document matching, and still showing you how to manually SNP. Before we do jump in, I just wanna say that this is considered an advanced course. And so we are gonna go into the uh, basics of SNPing um, but if you do have questions about that, we have web, we have different webinars for those. Um, so hopefully you can follow along and uh, and and follow follow along with me today. All right. So if we look at the plan financials here, as you as you scroll through, you can see that uh, these files, each page looks very similar, and we want we want those three data elements from each of these pages. 
So you could manually go through and snip this using the, that text snip here, or you could use form extraction. Hopefully that's setting off a, a, a alarm in your head that these are in similar locations and form extraction is, is a perfect tool for this. If you navigate into the automation section of your toolbar, you'll be able to see a form extraction as a drop down or just as a button above. Click into form extraction. And we're going to start by clicking into the uh, new form extraction button and applying that to the financial statements here, the plan level financials. Once you open that, uh, this is where we're going to set the three extractions. So first, uh, always set the repeatability of the of these SNPs. We want this to be per page because we have one PDF with all of those pages together. Then we're going to add an extraction. Um, I always suggest to make it a little bit bigger than the first one, just so you make sure you are encompassing uh, that full the full name or that full full caption. And upon releasing, you can see we have the, all of those extractions across all 16 pages populate here. The next extraction we're going to do is that end of period balance. I'm going to extract that right there. And you can see how all of those numbers pull automatically. And then the last one we're going to do here is that per share amount. So maybe yours looks like mine, uh, depending on where you set these parameters, they can they might vary a little bit, but um, what I see here is my extraction three did not pull uh, appropriately. As I click through, you can see that the yellow box, which is the parameters I placed, are not, they're in a little bit of a different uh, location on each of these documents. So uh, I wanted to show a quick tip of how I would troubleshoot that. Um, I would go up to this first tab, the, or our first page, and really explain the, the usage of keys here. So what you're gonna do is if you click, as you kind of hover over each of the extractions, you might see a yellow uh, highlight bouncing around. And that's the key that data sniffer has arbitrarily placed on the document when you place the extraction. So particularly when you have columns like this, I find the best way to set the key is to be almost horizontal. If we edit extraction three's key, you can click into the three dots here. We can actually we can actually set this key to be the end of period balance and see how that extracts better. And that's because that share per unit, that was our original key, and it was missing the parameters down here, or it was missing that that distance varied between page to page. So even if your extraction two. You can see I can make that the end of period balance here. And all of and the extractions stay the same. Um, or let me just double check that. Yeah, th those extractions uh, stay the same all the way throughout, even though the key is is being shared. So I just wanted to point that out um, when you are using form extraction, a little helpful tip I found. Now that we look at our previews and we're we're I'm comfortable with the way that this extraction has appeared. It uh, looks like we have some zeros in here and every other value looks um, that is being captured appropriately. You can click through these. What we're going to do here is export to Excel. That's going to extract those extractions and also keep that cross-referencing. Even after these extractions have been performed, you can still review at any time and make sure that um, you know, it is capturing that full, the full amount you're looking for. Then what you can do is just uh, control X or control C, that's copy or, pay, or copy or cut. We're gonna paste this right into our investment tab. You can see that when I do that, the, oops, I'm gonna rewrite this formula real quick. Uh, this formula should pull over, there we go. And we have some um, amounts populate in here. This is just based off of the formula uh, that we had inputted. Sorry if that didn't pull over for you. Mine had some reference errors. Uh, so it should be balance over period of shares. And so this is just one way to get data out of Excel or out of a PDF and into Excel. And then you can apply any of those formulas you want to it. I'm gonna fix this formula right here. And it shows that we have a balance of uh, 128 million um, for that end of period balance uh across all of our investments here 
If you do look, we have provided another schedule uh, for you that this was in provided in conjunction with those other investment schedules. Um, I just wanted to show here how you could tie this out for completeness. Um, this is this first, the inve plan investments, sorry, the plan financial statements uh, should tie into this uh, schedule of assets held. If you use that sum snip here, I just wanted to show that you can draw this over that amount exclude uh, this 2.9 because that is purpose participant loan. But if you include all of these mutual funds here, you can see that we are tying out um, with a very immaterial difference. Uh, and so you can feel comfortable that we have ensured the completeness uh, for our first procedure. Okay, next we're going to get into uh, the second, that second, uh, the second procedure. If you see here, we're going to be uh, recalculating that investment price per share, which is what was performed in column G. And now we're going to validate that to third party evidence. So similarly, uh, as I had mentioned, you could do this manually um, using just the text snip functions. We have included uh, this investment closing price, it's supposed to look similar to uh, an XML download you might receive from a certain uh, a terminal or, or pricing terminal or something like that. You could go through and search uh, for each of these investment names uh, using that search function that we have here and providing those SNPs, or you can use document matching. And so this is just going to expedite uh, the way that we um, have historically tested any sort of matching of data that we have. If you navigate with me to that document matching uh, button, here we're going to start a new document. And what we're gonna do is uh, if you pop open, actually uh, this is um, the grouping on row 16, you'll see that we have a little cheat sheet of how you can uh, follow these steps. So first you're going to select the sample data and that's going to be investment name and per price or price per share to, to look or to highlight both of these columns, make sure you're holding down control as you are going down column G and then column G here. These are the sample data. This is what we want Data Snipper to read into and then find the match in our two output columns we have here. The kind of the main thing with, it, with uh, document matching is that is the use of folders. And this is something that did come out with version five. So you might not have this on your uh, machine but you still are able to run document matching. It just might look a little bit different. Um, what we're going to ask Data Snipper to match is going to be the third party support here. So it should say the closing inventory prices for 2022. Um, that is the file that we're going to be matching to. If you select this folder or that file, we can now move on to the next and final step where we're going to pull Data Snipper for this investment name and for this price per share, find it on the third party support and put it in these two columns. But to do that, we're gonna say investment name in column H and price per share in column uh, I there. Now, before I do that, I wanted to mention two things. Um, I, I think it's the best practice to uh, always have, always apply a, an amount or threshold, particularly when you're dealing with matching formulas. So price per share um, column here that is our input, that's actually a formula, right? So there could be extra decimals that we're just not seeing in the, in the way that I formatted this column. So I usually like to have a value, actually I'm gonna do a percentage of 1% here um, to add a little bit of a threshold. And so what that's gonna do is as data snippers reading this investment name and finding this price per share, it's going to also match anything above or below uh, within a 1% deviation. Um, that's because document matching is looking for an exact match and that's what, that's what will prove the extraction. So um, I think it's really important, especially when you're dealing with formulas, but anything with um, numbers, you can use the amounts here. For investment name, you can use this fuzzy text matching. Um, if, if you do have a little bit of uh, like off, characters or misspellings or anything like that, uh, fuzzy text matching will match that. But for us, um, hopefully this is what your page looks like on the third party support. 
uh, we're going to uh, select, hopefully you've selected HI high here. Um, and here we're going to match all rows. I'm going to see what data sniffer has pulled out for us, uh, for us to evaluate uh, these uh, exceptions without or outside that 1% deviation that we provided. So if I open this just a little bit, um, you could see here that we have a couple of zeros uh, or match or incorrect matches, I would say, or false matches, maybe. We see that the name is included on uh, the report um, and the amount should be zero here. And that's because the price, there was no balance for this fund. So that's what I would expect. Uh, this does not need to be matched. What we can do is actually hide these uh, zeros amounts that have no period balance and no implication on this plan balance at the end of the year. And then I can see that we have another uh, miss or in uh, open match, I'll say. If we go into the investment name, the Cruff, you could see that that amount, there is an amount here. And if I click into uh, this column I, I can use a text snip to snip that amount into my, um, into my workbook. And I can see that it's actually uh, a little bit off of what we have determined um, a certain materiality to be. So if this really is an exception, as we've placed some conditional formatting in this last column, what you can do is actually click into the um, into that text snip and change it to a, a exception snip or validation snip, however you prefer to document um, with our manual snipping tool. So that is, that's the investment test, a little bit of a price test um, that you got to see um, form extraction across these plan level financial statements. You get to see some manual snipping here and also that document matching um, to the third party price. Um, I'm going to take a pause here and just see if there are any questions. Um, Justin, if you could look through and let me know which ones we could cover. Um, while we're doing that, while Justin's looking for a question for us, I'm going to pose the question, a uh, different question to you guys. Let me know how much, how many hours could uh, something like this, some sort of work paper like this, save your team uh, per engagement. So thinking through a basic form extraction, thinking through a basic uh, document match. Where do you see that time savings coming up for you? While you guys are uh, thinking about that, oh, there's Justin. Hey, um, um, hello, Rachel. Uh, we've actually been dealing with most of the questions, so there isn't anything that like specifically needs your attention. Um, okay. It might be nice to just quickly run through how you get to form extraction initially. I think maybe one or two people missed that based on the questions. Um, okay. Just a super quick run through of that. Yep. So the way that you get into form extraction is going to be uh, within this automation section of the toolbar. Um, if you are on a later version, you might not see it's document extraction, but form extraction does live here. You can click into this and let me actually go back. And this is kind of the opening page you should see. You'll see a couple of templates that uh, you should have available to you. Um, but the blue button is really kind of that start button that you can click into and then select which uh, file you want to apply the extractions to. Um, so this is where we went earlier, that financial statement plan, and then we brought it into uh, this view where we placed those three extractions. Thanks, Rachel. While you're there, actually, just before you close that, sorry, um, another question has just come in around editing the keys. If you okay. quickly just reshow that as well, that would be useful. Yeah, let me get into that. That's a really great question. So if I go back into, actually, let me get that into that form extraction. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll place that. Yeah, the keys I think are really, the keys are a key to using form extraction. Um, as I'm placing these, again, the snipper is arbitrarily finding an anchor point or a key to place the to help place this extraction in the repeatability that form extraction can hold. So when we select extract per page, which maybe may, uh, this is also something that uh, you need to make sure you're doing, you can see that we're missing uh, a couple of values. And so that's where the keys really come into play. If we look into, as I'm kind of hovering around, you can see that 
uh, for extraction one, the key has been identified as principal. And so in order to change that, you'll click into edit key and then use something unique, like any and something close to where your extraction is. So I've been doing for this exercise, I've been doing this report period as the key. And then you can see as you click through data snippers, finding that local common point throughout all of your forms and then placing the extraction right above. So it definitely comes, you get a little bit better with it as you get more familiar with uh, the forms and how the keys work. Um, but it is really uh, based off location or how far away uh, that key is to where you want to place that extraction. Maybe the other thing um, I could get into while we're here is document matching. So something that we're going to see in the next use case is going to be uh, that templating feature. Um, if I pop down this document matching uh, kind of key that we have here, um, I just want to remind you what our inputs were. So that was that price per share and this input that we have here. And so if we go back into document matching, if we get back into this window, um, you could obviously change anything here. You could rerun this as many times as you'd like. Um, but really the cool feature is to save this as a template. And what this really does is it saves this entire tab at this point for you to reuse again. So if I save this as a template, um, which I actually already have done. So actually, let, let me just demonstrate. Um, if I go into my templates, I've actually created at this point, I've, re I've, I've saved this as a template. And then I, uh, whenever you do create a template and you can save it locally, it'll always be the latest um, template that you have here. And as I click into this, it's actually gonna replicate that work paper that we just went through. And then you're gonna have the ability to paste in that sample data which was these inputs here, whoops, this input and this input, ah, that investment name and price. You can use this again on another engagement on the following year of the audit for this client. Um, you can really customize these templates. And I think there's a lot of power in them of saving all the formatting and all the structure where all you need to do is put in your new selections for the year and then update that third party support. The other thing that we'll get into shortly with templates is that I can actually copy and edit this um, and it'll just create a new template for me where now maybe I want to add in some new sample data. Maybe we want to pull in this end of period balance, for example. Um, that is, you're able to kind of come back through and make edits to these templates. And then we'll get into how you can publish those um, later down the line. But I think that that's really, really a cool feature with document matching. Um, that can save you a lot of efficiencies down the line. It might be a little bit to set up and to organize with your client. Um, you know, I need, I need it in this format or I need it to look like this. Um, I think that upfront work will really pay off at the end when you've already created a template uh, for a specific test. So I'm gonna pause there again, right before we get into the next use case. Um, yeah, I think I think we're we're good to go. So that was investment testing. Again, we showcased form extraction and document matching on those. If you're following along, the next uh, materials we're going to look at today are the form 5500, or is the form 5500? Excuse me. It should be called. It should be in the folder marked two. Uh, DS form 5500 reconciliation. This is what uh, we're gonna get into today. Just checking the time, looking good there. All right. So the, another thing that I learned uh, through my conversations with um, employee benefit plan auditors is Form 5500. I think we wanted to really end on this use case in the series because the end of the day, it's, it is what the, the audit work uh, accumulates to. And we know that this is standard across every single engagement. So hopefully, uh, you know, after this use case, you'll see the benefit and the, uh, you know, amount of power that Data Snipper has. Um, and we've created this template um, so that you can actually go and use it 
um, down the line. So I will walk through each of like the formulas and stuff and how everything's pulling in. I'll be, be sure to ask us any questions if you do have any. So starting on the reconciliation tab, um, what we've done is we've pulled in a trial balance here. And so I think typically you might see it in this format. Um, really what we wanna show is that um, what we're doing is pulling in a formula from the trial balance tab. You can see it above here. Um, just to break this, just to set up the work paper. Um, I think it makes it really helpful to see it in this format, especially as we're going to be performing a reconciliation to the form 5500 and to the financial statements. Um, so just be sure to look and see how this has been set up uh, for your different account names as you're going through. Um, but so this is really where we're starting is with this trial balance. If you open up the grouping in column H here, you'll see that we've set up a place for this for the form 5500 to fall into um, into this work paper. We have the schedule H reference, which is the only uh, schedule that we've uh, performed this procedure over. Um, there are a lot of pages in a typical form 5500 I've also learned. So this is really just that financial information that we do want to perform this reconciliation over. And we do have a formula in here um, that is going to pull in this data after we've extracted it. So that's what we'll go into first. Um, and really we're gonna be focusing on here, the trial balance to form 5500 reconciliation. And to do that, we're first going to use form extraction. And that's really going again to be per, uh, bringing in this data from a from our clients 5500 that they've filled out. We navigate to data snipper and then form extraction. We're going to pause at this window. And everyone, I want everyone to get to this point because I do want to show you something that we've done. I think for the first time uh, in data snipper. Um, if you go, you might not have the different countries here but you should be able to see a form 5500 template that we've created. So this is something that Justin and I collaborated on and we published uh, as da from Data Snipper to you um, that you can leverage in your form 5500 uh, procedures through August 31st. So this will be up about a week after, uh, until a week after our tips and tricks webinar, tips and tricks webinar. Um, so we will walk through how you can use this and how you can customize it uh, for your engagement purposes. But for now, what we're going to do is click into this template and you should get this pop up. These are the files that we've already imported into Data Snipper. I would like for you to select uh, Form 5500 from our client and you can click OK there. So another shout out to um, Aaron for helping me, walking me through a Form 5500. Um, you can see here that this is, uh, she showed the tie outs of the prior year and uh, the current year, and this will actually go all the way through the financial statement. So again, we just wanted to showcase how Data Snipper uh, can work on a real life auditor's, uh, you know, document. So again, um, we've saved this as a template, similar to how I showed with document matching. We've saved this as a template and each of the extractions has been named for the reference you see on that form 5500. So 1C9, you can see uh, where I'm, as I hover over, that's the key that's being highlighted. And then you could see where E, the tick mark E is, that's what's actually being, uh, that box has been matched. So we've taken the time to set up the keys so that the template is performed with excellent ac accuracy every time I've done it. Um, so please give it a roll and let us know how it works for you. Um, so scrolling all the way down, you can see all the extractions that we have placed. It's gonna be all of these boxes here. And these are the ones that are actually also in the previews uh, for, this one, for this one document, Form 5500 Client. What we're gonna do is export this to Excel. And now we have our extractions. Um, the thing with Data Snipper is this is the way it populates. So um, what, what we've done in our reconciliation tab is included an H lookup formula. And you can see here um, that each of these amounts has been pulled in based off this H lookup. So as I scroll down, you can see cash non bearing interest was 1A on our Schedule H, and that's the amount that has been pulled in. And you can see that highlighted here. 
we click down, we continue to see the amounts uh, be pulled. Um, another reason of why we set it up like this is just because, you know, the trial balance will have certain financial statement captions and the form 5500 might break some of these out. That was kind of the uh, situation here. And that the two parts were not documented on, or disclosed on the trial balance separately, but that total we have tied out here. But that's really where these uh, where this formula is coming from. We're taking A minus B to show that we have tied out with very immaterial exception um, that trial balance to the form 5500. So one other thing I'd like to touch on here is that within this formula, um, we've included, or Justin really is the mastermind behind this. Um, what we've done is in, in this formula, we've given you the ability to change the tab name. So if you go to the start tab, you'll see that we, we've actually left some step-by-step -step instructions for you to follow along um, exactly what we've just done in order to populate that column G here if you wanna keep uh, using this template. And what's really cool is that you can change the tab name and it gives you more, um, more of that flexibility to um, how the final work paper is presented. You don't have to have a tab name form extraction um, in order to use the, those amounts that have been extracted. Uh, and because that formula, the indirect and the H lookup, it's very dynamic. You don't have, you can just use um, that each lookup in that formula each time within form extraction when that new tab is generated. So if you navigate up here, um, right now the tab does say form extraction. So I'd actually like to change this to client 2021. You can see that our reconciliation, those amounts have left. So if you come into that form extraction tab, I'm just gonna change this to client 2021. And now that reconciliation tab has uh, has re repopulated. So just to kind of explain one more time, this F FG13 cell, um, you can edit that formula that we provided to change different uh, tab names um, and make this work paper really customized to you. Um, so now that we've gotten our trial balance and our form 5500 extracted, now we're gonna go into the reconciliation to the financial statement. If you open up these last two uh, groupings here, you'll see that we have um, a similar setup. And here is where we're gonna use document matching. What you can do is follow, follow along how we did before. We're gonna start a new document matching and select this input data. That's gonna be account name and that year to date amount. Uh, that we have in columns C and D. Oops, I didn't select it. Try that again. There we go. Okay, down to the admin fees. Then we're going to click next. And this is where we're going to use those the uh, folders again. In the financial statements folder, there is a statement of net changes and the, what is the other one? Let me see. I forget what it is. Change it, uh, statement of changes and then the statement of net assets. So these are the two files that we've put into that financial statements folder for you already. Um, so those are the ones that we're going to be matching to from our inputs here. You click next. And again, we're going to just align where these outputs will be. You can use uh, column 10 or row 10, excuse me, to uh, just align there where we want account name in column H and year to date amount in column L. Um, and again, I'm going to apply a one per one dollar or one euro threshold um, to that year to date amount so that uh, these amounts, I do get that best hit as possible, best hit I can as possible. Now I'm gonna click match all rows and now we can review our, uh, review our extractions. As you click through, you can see the cash, that financial statement caption has been picked up from the net assets available. And that amount for that 2021 uh, year is being extracted. And this does take a little bit of setup between um, you know, the rows, like I said, but you could see how uh, this formula is subtracting from the trial balance to, those, uh, to the financial statements of the plan. 
and that we've got a, you know, no outstanding differences. I do see here that we got a hit on the amount, but it looks like that ca the, oops, that caption wasn't able to come over. So if that is the case, um, you know, you, that's what the text snip is for. You can go ahead and just uh, provide a text snip over that amount and it'll populate uh, just as, as you want it to. You can also change this. We can say total rollover contributions uh, just to match the rest of those financial statement captions. So that is really the tie out that we've created um, for you. I think really what we wanted to showcase is the, is the ability to have templates um, in form extraction. Again, if you go into form extraction, and I'll go back, um, you know, this form 5500, again, it should be available to everybody that has a US license. So if we click into that, I do just want to show one more example of how it can work on a 2022 uh, form 5500 form. So if you go into import documents, we have provided a 22 folder, 2022 folder, excuse me. And so this is one that I hand wrote and sent myself pictures of because I wanted to make sure that the template was working. So you can upload that and uh, make sure that that is the only form you're selecting to apply the ex extraction to. I'm gonna click okay. And even if you get this pop-up, that's okay. Um, it's just a check on what it's being able to find. You can see here on this sample 2022 form, um, I can click through each of these extractions and double check. So 1C9, is that being pulled correctly? Even though that it's outside the box, it does look like it's pulling. Um, you can see here, we do have an empty square. And if I look at 2B1E, which is participant loans, it looks like my extraction is a little bit off. That's okay. Um, even if this extraction is, is empty, um, I would still suggest going through um, and, and reviewing each of these. Before you export to Excel um, and continue the process as I've shown, this is where you're going to be able to edit the, the, uh, the template we've provided. So if you're following along, you can click into edit and you'll be able to save it to my templates on your local machine. Then you can, maybe your clients do have a B1A or 2B1A amount that they typically see here. You can go in and add that extraction um, and add as many new ones as you'd like. So what we're gonna do is export this to Excel. And then for those empty ones that we had here, what I would do is just come in and move the box. After you've set those extractions, they're not, um, they're not cemented there. Oops, they are uh, movable. So you could see here that the snipper is identifying this as a value. And I've just um, kind of right-sided my extractions quite quickly, um, leveraging leveraging the, the, the template feature. So I'm going to take a sip of water, <laughs> um, but also I'm gonna set out another poll, um, just asking you about which template do you think you're gonna find more use out of between form extraction or document matching or both. Um, you know, that's really what we wanted to drive home today of using different templating features we have. Um, again, featured are going to be ones published by us here at Data Sniffer for um, our client. Company templates, you can see I have two here um, that I created and published to my own license. Then templates is going to be any ones that I've created and saved locally. There is a process to share these. Um, and you know any transformation manager or your customer success manager can help you uh, walk you through that process if you are interested in that. Um, again, I think it is really the key to finding more efficiencies in uh, employee benefit plan audits, um, particularly because you're doing the same test across your clients each year. Um, so why not create leverage some templating uh, to standardize the way you work? All right, so that was, which poll was that? Poll four, I think that puts us 
We have a little bit of time. Dustin, are there any questions or any features we should go back and revisit? I think you're covering things really well. Um, one of the common questions that has come through is really around the templating. Okay. Um, I think I think you have just readdressed it, but maybe just as a kind of to flog a dead horse kind of a probably not the best saying. <laughs> but maybe just re-looking really at how like once you have set up your template, how would you save that? Where does that get saved? And then what's the, what's the difference between my templates and company templates and how do we get that working? Okay, yeah, for sure. So um maybe I can do yeah, this this uh this last template I made what is for oh no, I don't want to do that one. Maybe I'll go back to this form 5500. Okay, so let's go back into maybe I'll do it across these two forms here. Um, and you can see that the more forms you select, you'll see both of those side by side. Um, these amounts are the exact same. I copied them over. So it is good to see that these are all pulling accurately there. Um, so after, after you're using, whether it's a company template or a featured template, or even one that you created yourself, uh, you do have this ability to edit. So what this will do is save this to your my template. So I can just say form 5500, data snipper template, and we'll just say schedule H extractions. Um, and this this is just for me to know kind of some detail about what is being saved. You can put whatever you'd like here. I'm going to click OK, and now you're going to get this pop up to review it make sure uh, those extractions all saved appropriately. So if you didn't go back to revisit a key, that's where I would do this. By clicking OK, you'll see that now we are have we have the ability to add an extraction. Like I said, if you if your client maybe does have a 2F, right, that you have uh, an extraction you want to place here, I would add an extraction onto the document itself. What did I say? 2F? So I would place the extraction big enough within the box so that it will really capture anything um, in that, whether it's handwritten or typed in. And then I would edit the key. You can see that Data Snipper did highlight and appropriately find that 2F. Um, alternatively, I found success with actually highlighting the whole caption there. Um, you know, there's nothing in this value or in this cell, so we're not going to see anything. Um, but it, but that is also what I would expect. Right, I wouldn't expect any value to be in here. So that tells me data snipper is appropriately pulling these. Um, and then that latest extraction, it'll always default to be named extraction one, two, three, all the way up. So um, all, I always suggest to add it, add this to F, add an extraction name. And then if that is the only edit you need, you could save this as a template and then that'll go into the my templates. So then maybe I want to say this is form 5500, schedule H with new extractions, or maybe this is just for 2022. However you want to save it, um, really I'm just trying to get across that you want to be specific with how you're saving these, because really this is all that information that you'll get. Uh, so it'll show those extraction names. If you don't set those, it'll just come out as extraction one, two, three, four. You can see that can get a little repetitive sometimes. So I'm glad to announce that it looks like most people can't choose between which template that they want to use. Um, I think they both have a lot of they both have a lot of value. It just depends on how you want to set up your work papers. Um, you know, we hope to see a lot of clicks into those for, that form extraction template um, for form 5500 and hear about how well it's working for you. Okay, so let me get back into, oh, I forgot to show this. Oh, Justin, I'm sorry. I forgot to show this cool uh, PowerPoint slide that you made. <laughs> um, but as we get back into the PowerPoint, I just wanna show that, you know, we have we did show a use case with both form extraction and document matching. Um, you can use these in either way. Again, it depends on your, I would say the way that your work paper set up. Um, but glad to see most people can't choose between the two awesome features. 